we are back with our next tutorial in this tutorial let's see all about aquatic ecosystem aquatic ecosystem whenever you heard the word aquatic previously in ecosystem classification of ecosystem i have told you about aquatic ecosystem so we'll be discussing all about aquatic ecosystem in this tutorial aquatic ecosystem deals with water bodies the biotic components present in them are either fresh water or marine water I have told you aquatic ecosystem is further divided into two types fresh water ecosystem and marine water ecosystem so fresh water ecosystem is divided into lentic and lotic I have clearly told you that lentic is the stationary water I hope everyone remembered it if you watched the first video of this chapter so lentic states for stationary and lotic means free flow so lentic means lakes and ponds lotic means streams and rivers okay let's go in depth on these four topics these four topics okay okay basically let's start with pond ecosystem pond pond comes under lentic lentic means stationary so from that we can write a point that ponds are the stationary 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 places they can they, the water will not flow from one place to another we can write like that and let us start the points which i which i have written here pond ecosystem it is a small freshwater ecosystem where water is stagnant which means the flow of water is not possible hence ponds are seasonal in nature that is they revive enough water during the rainy season they going to fill up at rainy season and they will be empty on a sunny day or in summer okay ponds are usually shallow water bodies which play a very important role in villages that too in villages means for agriculture guys especially so they contain aquatic plants insects and fishes they are used to walk they are used for washing clothes bathing and drinking water so due to these things it is polluted so lakes are stationary stationary that's what the first point indicates and they are seasonal that's the second point these are very important in villages that's the third point and it contains aquatic plants insects and fishes that is the fourth point and these are used for washing clothes and bathing and it is polluted this is the fifth point and this is all about pond ecosystem so now let's go through lake ecosystem now okay i hope if you remember lake also comes under lentic which means stationary so lakes are the big fresh water bodies with stationary water so lakes are divided into some zones guys zones just you need to remember the zone names there are three major zones basically the first zone is the shallow zone which is the uppermost zone okay it is the shallow water zone called as lateral zone it is right here lateral zone and nextly an open water zone where effective penetration of light lghtt is missing light takes place okay i hope you got the, you understood the two points that the open shallow area is called as lateral zone and the upper surface through which the light penetrates is called as the limit limatic zone like light okay limatic zone and the deep water are where, uh, where there is no penetration of light is called as profundal zone so i hope everyone got a small idea on lake ecosystem please go through these topics once again guys because you cannot remember them in a single stretch so you need to go through the video again or download the notes and you can even go through it that's fine okay stream ecosystem stream ecosystem if you remember if you remember it is okay guys i hope everyone is now clear with lake ecosystem so let's go through stream ecosystem guys now stream ecosystem it is also a freshwater aquatic ecosystem where current 
is the major controlling factor current is nothing but the waves which come at your okay let's take example of a beach the water comes from a far place with some pressure that waves are called as currents of that water okay are the major controlling factors and oxygen and nutrients in the water is major is more uniform land water exchange is more extensive that is all about stream and all stream organisms have the face more external temperatures as they depend under the water so they need to experience more amount of temperature and even the currents those currents is more compared to lakes and ponds this is more danger streams okay these have large areas of exposure to air producing lot lots of co2 hence dissolved oxygen is really high so this is streams are the best place for growth of animals and plants that those are active aquatic plants and animals guys i hope everyone got a small idea on this so let's go through river ecosystem river ecosystem is nothing but rivers are the larger streams it is larger than streams to be clear that flows down from mountains hills and flow through the plains okay i hope everyone got a small idea on difference between streams and rivers okay basically rivers river ecosystem has three phases phase 1 cold water from the mountains okay just a second mm. from the mountain rushes down as waterfall the large amount of dissolved oxygen it has large amount of dissolved oxygen plants stick to the rocks and fishes in the cold water flow down so i hope everyone got a small idea on phase 1 so phase 1 is nothing but the cold water falls from the mountains as we all know cold water has more concentration of oxygen always dissolved oxygen so it has large amount of dissolved oxygen and once it falls from a large height from the top of the mountain when it falls on a small rock or something like that all the plants stick to that rock due to that pressure even the fishes and animals if the cold water flows down they are going to flow down with that water okay basically next the phase 2 phase 2 is nothing but here there are some gentle slopes for the water to get warmer and warmer and which supports growth of plants so basically in the first they have just stick to the all the plants which are present there stick to the rocks and now the water from the slopes from the hill tops and slopes traveled all the way to the gentle slopes where the water flows really really slower which supports the growth of the plants in that particular area so the last phase the third phase the river water are very rich in biotic diversity moving down the hills they bring rich nutrients minerals with them which is deposited on the plains before reaching the oceans so to be clear every river ends up to travel to the ocean guys to be clear that's a truth and at the end of the third phase they collect all the rich materials biotic biotic materials from everywhere and all these rich nutrients are left on a peninsula or a plain and the mix up with the ocean so i hope everyone got a small idea on lake ecosystem ocean ecosystem stream ecosystem and river ecosystem so in the next tutorial let's see about different types of energy resources so i hope everyone understood the video thanks for watching